Hello, this is Javier coming at you with a quick tutorial on how to create a lead file and pull credit with LendingQB. Now this is very important because you have to keep in mind that every single loan that comes in starts its life as a lead and remains there until all the conditions are in in order to hand it over to the actual underwriter. Now a couple of things here first. First of all, you have to obviously be an MLS license and you have to be fully sponsored by Radiant Mortgage Bank. You must also possess the login credentials for not just lending QB, but also for the ability to pull credit. Now those two credentials come in with your welcome packet that you will receive within 48 hours of being accepted by Radiant Mortgage Bank. Also, something that's very important on the technical side is that you must use Microsoft Internet Explorer 8.0 or newer. And this is what the logo for Explorer looks like. Now, this is very important because this will not work with any other browser, especially if you have a Mac, laptop, or desktop computer. Now, most new computers come with what's called Windows 10, and Windows 10 bring out the Microsoft Edge browser. Now, this is important because if you just see the little logo, it looks a lot like the Internet Explorer, but it will not work. So do not use the Microsoft Edge, which is standard, if you would, on Windows 10. So again, if you have the Internet Explorer, the one on the left, you're good to go. We've got Microsoft Edge on the right. It's not going to work. It's the number one reason new agents are unable to access lending QB is because they are on the wrong browser. And in their defense, it looks pretty similar, as you can tell by the logos in front of you. Now, lastly, before we get started, you must also have the borrower's authorization and certification form completed and signed and in PDF format. Now, how do you get it into PDF format? Either scan it or use an app on your phone to take a picture and convert it to PDF format. And also, you have to know where you saved it. You usually just put it on your desktop for easy access or wherever you sto uh, store it. Just make sure you know where it's at. And then also, you have to have a copy of the borrower's social security cards and driver's license or licenses if there's going to be more than one borrower. This is very important to have in your possession before you get started. Otherwise, it's going to be an auto compliance credit check and you can uh, potentially get in trouble but we don't want to do that it's a very heavily regulated industry and you should know and let's just stick to all of the requirements that are given to us now first of all you're going to go to the uh, lending qb website which is at the top of the screen which is lendersoffice.com now when you're trying to find it it's important that you actually type the address and as you see it at the top http colon forward slash forward slash www.lendersoffice.com forward slash or just simply copy and paste it or just go to our website rmbuniversity.com and at the bottom of the page as you'll see next to the arrow there's an actual link to the lending QB login page so just go ahead and do that now if you get an error like the one that you see here on the screen right now it's simply because you're using the wrong browser if you try to use Chrome or Firefox or anything that's not Internet Explorer 8.0 or, or newer, you're going to get this error. If you do, we'll get out of there and just simply use the right browser. And once you do so, you'll come to this page right here. As you can see, it's pretty simple. You get to store your login information if you want to, if, depending on your settings. And once you do that, you're basically in. So this is the first set of credentials, which is, of course, the one to get into lending QB itself. Now, that'll bring you to this page that you see on the screen at this point and on the left hand side you'll see where it says leads do not go into the loan section stick to the lead section only it's either going to be a purchase lead or a refinance lead in this example i'm using a purchase lead there's really no difference between the two except for a few boxes that you check or uncheck so it's no big difference be, uh, depending on what it is you're trying to do so i'm going to click on the create purchase lead link the system actually creates a lead and assigns it a number as you actually press the button and then it brings you here to your dashboard if you would as you can see you have your information at the top and so on and so what this is going to allow you to do is to simply go ahead and get to work now the first order of business is that you must do things in the order in which I'm going to describe to you otherwise it will not work first and foremost I'm going to click on the link on the bottom that says borrowers info and then there's a bar info which is short for borrowers of course and you're going to click on that when you get to this screen, all you're going to do is simply input the first name, middle name, and last name of the borrower direct, uh, directly as it appears on their driver's license or ID. Nothing else, no more, no less. No date of birth, no social security, nothing. Just first name, 
middle name if they have it if not leave it blank and then the last name once again directly from their driver's license you're going to do the same thing with the co-borrower on the right hand side if there is one and remember the only way they can be co-borrowers is, is if they are married otherwise it's going to simply be two separate borrowers as well so once you put this information and i'm going to keep it very simple here there's only going to be one borrower i just put joe smith his middle name is james as it shows on her on his id card and at that point all i'm going to do is click on the save button at the top that's all you do name including first uh, middle and last name and hit save now if you forget to click on the save button a box will pop up asking you if you want to save it so just go ahead and say yes and save it once you save it you're going to scroll down the column on the left hand side of the screen and you're going to look for something that says upload documents and this is where we're going to start working on the borrower's authorization again do this within compliance otherwise you can get in a lot of trouble not just with the company but also with the regulators because we've got to make sure we have their signature and proof that they gave us permission to run their credit and represent them so once you go ahead and uh, click on the upload documents button it'll come here so at this point you're going to select the doc type now remember that we uh, reading mortgage bank we are paperless the only paper we deal with is the borrower's authorization and certification beyond that it's all going to be scanned it's all going to be uploaded using this portal so for right now we're going to click on select doc type and a whole lot of options pop up and this is where you're going to upload your other conditions as you move down to the line in the process with your loan so again at this point what we're going to do is we're going to upload the borrower's authorization so all you need to do is click on the search box at the top and just type in b-o-r-r -R, short for borrowers and it'll give you all the results that there are that match that so as you can see it has a lot of different things but what we're looking for is the borrower's authorization which is right where the arrow is pointing so we're going to click on that it opens up a new screen and now we have on the right hand side a yellow arrow with the browse uh, button we're going to click on that to browse to wherever we have the form saved i have it on my desktop and there it is joe smith borrowers authorization pdf format i'm going to select it i'm going to hit open and that's it now if you notice on the lower left hand first of all up at the top it does show the file address of where it's located which is great and now all i need to do is click upload and the system will upload it automatically now once you're done with that the next thing you need to do is you're going to click on the left hand side scroll down or up i should say to where it says custom fields 21 through 40. this these are the actual fields for a standard 1003 we're going to click on the middle one custom fields 21 through 40 which will bring us here now if you notice when we do 21 through 40 in field 21 the borrower's authorization received uh, description is already there but we need to tell the system when we uploaded it so all we're going to do at this point is click on the field where date is located so you're just going to click on to activate it and all you're going to do is type in the letter t t as in tom or as in today when you click on the t it will actually go ahead and immediately input the date for you as you can see what it did for me right there and so at this point once again all i'm going to simply do is make sure that the date is correct and click on the save button on the upper left hand corner now once that is done we're going to go as you can see on the left hand side scroll down just a little bit and we're going to look for borrower's info now when you go to borrower info as you can see right here this screen pops up and so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and input all the information that we need to input for this particular borrower and the things that we're going to need include things like their first name middle name last name social security date of birth and if they are married or there's a co-borrower on the right hand side we're going to do the same thing now what's really nice about this is that once you enter the address and on the bottom one there's a button on the right hand side to transfer all of that information over to the co-borrower if they have the same address and other information so that's the information we're also going to need to run the credit including their date of birth their address their social security number if you don't have all this information uh, you don't have a complete credit file and you're not going to be able to pull it and so you have to make sure that you have everything that i mentioned to you which is very simple and most of this by the way will come from your social security card that you obtain for the borrowers and also from the uh, driver's licenses or id or ids from the borrowers as well just always make sure that whatever shows on the ID is their current address. People sometimes move 
and don't update their address on the actual uh, driver's licenses or IDs. So just make sure you ask the right questions at this point. So again, once I do this, I'm going to make sure that I save it. And even if I clicked away, it would still ask me if I wanted to save it. But again, we want to make sure we have everything, especially the address that matches their current address, because that's what they're going to use for all the other information. Now, I'm going to scroll to the bottom of the left-hand uh, portal, as you can see on the menu. And when I'm going to get to where it says order credit. Now, when I click on order credit, it's going to be very important that I leave things the way they are. You'll see that the address, the date of birth, the uh, social security number, and so on, has already been transferred over from the other fields that I entered it earlier on their borrower's information. So pretty much we're done. All we're going to do is make sure that the pay with credit card box is checked off. If you're in, uh, well, you, if somebody's in training, we pay for the actual credit, but if you are already licensed and up and running on your own, then you pay for it. I don't know the exact cost. I think it's $9 a person or cheaper if it's a couple, uh, 15 bucks or something like that, which is of course why we wanna make sure we pre-qualify them to make sure that we're doing this and that it's worth running. So once we go ahead and do that, once again, I clicked on the order credit, which is the uh, tab you see on the left-hand side. I made sure that the uh, pay with credit card was uh, good to go. And this is where your credentials for running credit come in. Now what happens is as, as I scroll down to the bottom of the screen, you'll see the login information. This is different than the first login requirement. This is separate. And, and you'll know because when you get your credentials, one will say for lending QB and the other one will be for credit. This is where you're gonna input your user or login name, your password, and make sure that again, uh, you remember the login. When you do that, it doesn't remember your password, just your username to make it easier the next time you have to pull it. Uh, at that point, what you're gonna do is quite simply just go in and input the information as you see right there, your name, your address, and the uh, credit card number, all the information that's pertinent for the card, and just simply hit OK, and make sure you check the yellow box as well. At this point, the system will immediately start to run the credit, and once it actually runs the credit, it'll populate it at the top of the screen. If you notice where it says borrower's credit score, XP stands for Experian, and then NA because it hasn't pulled it yet, TU is from TransUnion, which of course hasn't pulled it yet, and then Equifax is the last one. If there's a co-borrower, their scores will show up there as well, and they will even go ahead and put them in a certain order, where it will be from left to right, lower score to highest, and of course we always use the middle one as well. So once it runs it, you'll know that it ran it because in this example, it comes back and gives it to you as you can see it on the screen right now. And at this point, we can either view it in PDF, save it, and so on. And it's always important to click on the view in PDF, and then it'll open it up in a PDF format, and then just simply save as. And I always save it as, in this example, you know, John Smith full credit report, so that I know that I have it. Now, I create, I use Dropbox, you can use whatever you want, but my recommendation is to create a folder for each borrower. And that's where you're going to put the credit report. That's where you're going to put the files as they email you their conditions, whether it be pay stubs, bank statements, and so on. And you want to make sure that you have everything in one single place. I recommend Dropbox because if you use Dropbox, you can share that with the processors and the underwriters and the coordinators to get things moving faster. Every time you drop it in Dropbox here, it pops up in their Dropbox, meaning that they can access it that much quicker. Now, here's something that's very important, and this is what we call the new loan checklist. This is something that's available to all of you in the back office or in the resources tab of rmbuniversity.com, which is our own website. And what this represents are the things that we need to turn something from an actual lead into a loan. Whether it's a purchase or a refi, it does not matter. If it's conventional, FHA or VA, we're gonna need the things that you see there. And some of them we already have. So we're going to need a complete 1003 with all employer info, which you can actually log into your uh, lending QB and complete it online. It's paperless. We need the bars authorization and uh, certification and authorization, which we already have. If it's a refi, we need the hazard insurance declarations page to make sure that we give them the same insurance, um, so yeah, the same insurance company that they already have. Also, if it's a non-borrowing spouse, we need their credit info. For uh, most people, we're going to require two months worth of bank statements in PDF format, of course, and also the last two years filed federal 1040 taxes signed. Now, the only exception is if for whatever reason they file electronically, like most people do, they won't have an actual wet signature on it, but somewhere on it, it usually says that uh, 
you know, it was certified. And it doesn't really matter because we always do what's called a 4506T, which is the transcript of it. So no matter what they give us, we're going to run it through the IRS and confirm that what they give us uh, or they gave us match what's on file with the IRS as well. We're going to need two years worth of W-2s. We're going to need one month worth of pay subs or 30 days. And if it's a refi, we need to get a copy of their mortgage note or something like that so we can know exactly what they have and a copy of their mortgage statement so we can order what's called the payoff demand and see how much exactly they owe at any given time. Uh, the driver's license, we should have collected up front. And then their social security card, we should have collected that up front as well. Now, if it's a VA, and I'll help you with anything related to the VA, we will need the COE or certificate of eligibility. We'll need the DD-214, which is their discharge paperwork, and the nearest living relative as well. If it's FHA, we'll need the two most, uh, 12 most, uh, months of canceled checks remaining with the uh, borrowers if they've moved, or the utility bill from a co-borrower if they are being removed. And all this stuff, again, don't worry about it. We usually stick to the top part only. So once we run your credit and for your potential borrower and we tell you that it's a go, we need you to collect this. If you're already in Lending QB, obviously that means that you're fully licensed and that's your cue to start collecting this. The clock does not start running until we have everything we need, which is what appears on this page, period. If we get half, if we get 90% of what's here, even if we got 95% of what's here, you're not going to get a solid answer until every single thing that is here comes in. And so again, I just want to emphasize a few things as I close this quick uh, tutorial. You must read and adhere to all Radiant Mortgage Band regulations, including, uh, including but not limited to the fact that you cannot run your own credit. You've got to give it to an upline. Somebody else has to run it. Everybody's very strict about that. Again, you cannot run your own credit. Uh, you cannot give a copy of a credit report to a borrower or potential borrower. You can give them their credit score. And the disclosures that go out electronically will give them all the disclosures you need to take care of. So you don't have to worry about a thing. But once again, you cannot give them a copy of the actual credit report. All right. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you need uh, any kind of uh, refresher at any time, especially as you're trying to run your first few sets of credit, uh, just please hit replay, pause it, do whatever you have to do. And I wish you nothing but success. Thank you so much.